Mother's Day to all of you. We none of us could have been here without all of you. You got that? Literally. So thank you very much, mothers, for all your care and love with your children. Uh, you know the world will be a sad day, a sad place without mothers. So thank you very much, um, and we praise Jesus because you know every day is your day, but today is we we try. Uh, see, my wife said, "Mm-hmm, yeah, she knows." Uh, Every day is your day, but today is like we publicly celebrate you, and thank you for being here this morning, as well as thank you for all the mothers that are watching at home. Happy Mother's Day. I called my mother today, and then she was crying because she received a basket uh, from her favorite son. Um, my brother doesn't speak English, so he's not going to understand that, okay? So, <laughs> just for the record. So, we... Uh, Oh, and a few uh, announcements this morning as we welcome you. I don't know if you had a chance to get, but on the table, if you haven't received the one yet, raise your hand and we'll get one for you. Okay, one. Anybody else that did not receive? Two, three. Uh, where is Isabella or Juliana? Can you handle some of the people that has not received? This is the seniors calendar for June and September. There's some uh, information here about the programs. We are slowly coming back. Um, and I will tell you, Boy, I miss those um, those Tuesday mornings. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun. So you know, as as we get this COVID situation, um, people are getting their vaccines. Hopefully, you know, we we feel that it will be a, a a good time for us to slowly come back in a safe way. So you see a lot of information there. You see some of the outings. You see um, sort of a. a little newsletter from the La Capitana desk. If you don't know what La, La, La Capitana is, it's captain in Spanish. Um, so it's from her desk. Um, so make sure you keep one of those. Make sure you have that information um, because there is uh, some good stuff coming up, some fun programs, uh, and we are um, would love to you to participate. And from the guys too, this is just preliminary, but uh, there was a group of guys that went out less uh, yesterday we went some fishing we got fishing on uh, clear water um, there was some great fishermen and there and that was your captain um, so the great fishermen did a great job they cat they caught a lot of good fish I got one and I have a picture and I have a witness right mr. Den? he promised that it's gonna be our secret um, so Soon, the next few uh, weeks and months, we're also going to come up with a calendar for the men's gatherings. Uh, so just stay tuned. You know, like our Facebook page. We're going to do a lot of advertisement on our Facebook page. It, it, I, I had a wide angle camera and it did not fit on it. So they had to get another boat to put in the side boat. Yeah, absolutely. More, I would say. I didn't ask for his name, so I don't know that. <laughs> Question time is over. 
Stick with my story. <laughs> now, well, after the after the service, get with us about those questions. Okay. Yes. So uh, get with us after the service on the questions. Okay. So on the back of the program as well, you, I hope you got that one. Um, you see some of the information there. Some of those, the first three things is things that are just to, uh, they already passed. But then you see Mother's Day today. We have a church graduation. May 16, we're going to celebrate Alexander and Isaiah after the worship service. Lunch will provide it. Um, Vacation Bible School will be June 7 to 11. We need volunteers, so please talk to us about if you want to volunteer. Uh, and you also see uh, Back to School Drive that we're partnering with uh, Peace River Elementary. And we're going to provide uh, school supplies for students grade 3rd to 5th grades. Um, the other things that we have is uh, registration for summer camp. So if you or somebody at home, if you still wanting to go to summer camp, please uh, visit with us. Contact my wife or I or Mr. Uh, Mrs. Lisa. So um, it's a, a lot of exciting things coming up. Um, Okay, so if you're coming to the celebration um, on May 16th for the, the uh, graduates, make sure you sign up as you leave so we have enough food to all of you. Okay, so I'm going to be reading the call to worship. And then in the meantime, I'll ask the praise band to start making their way to the stage. Uh, I am the L part leader, and then the C part is you guide the congregation. Okay. Call to worship, the words are inside of your program. We celebrate today our mothers who bore in us and created us as infants. We also remember mothers who love, who had lost their children through illness or violence. Those tears will still flow from their broken hearts. Congregation. We remember families who are separated and those exiled from the land of their birth by frontiers, by barbed wire, and by war's violence. We express gratitude to our spiritual mothers and fathers who guided us throughout life. We hold up mothers of diverse religions and creeds who experience life in the spirit ways. Those who are com uh, comforted and encouraged by what they believe, and those who struggle to find meaning and hope in their fate. Acknowledging the joys and sorrows of life, we hope to depart this place transformed by Christ's Spirit that we may express compassion, seek justice, show mercy, and pursue peace wherever our lives may lead. May God bless you this morning. May God continue to prepare you to this time of worship. From one mic to the other. Uh, so if you can, please stand as we're going to worship the Lord this morning through music. Um, we'll have two songs now, and then we'll have another song after the message. Our first song uh, will be Your Grace is Enough. Uh, so if you know the lyrics, sing with us, clap, dance, wherever, how you want to express your joy to the Lord this morning.
grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Sometimes we think that we need so much, and we think that God owns us, and he, we need to have this, and we have the right to have. And I think this song reminds us that all we really need is God's grace, and that's it's available for us. Um, it's available for us free of charge, but it requires us understanding that this availability is there um, sometimes we go through lots of walks of life and we think that we are alone but the grace of God is available to all of us
morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with Thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for another beautiful day in Florida. A day we have set aside and called Mother's Day. We thank you, Lord, for our mothers, each and every mother that's here this morning. We ask your prayer, blessings upon all of us and lead us in the way in which you would have us to go. We love you, Lord. We honor you and we're going to praise you. No matter what come, what go. We're going to hold on to you because you're all that we have. Without you in our life, Lord, we would be nothing. We could do nothing without you. You are the way. You are the truth. You are the light. Remember those that would like to be here this morning and are not able to get here, Lord. Ask your blessings upon them. Those that are listening, that love you, Lord, we praise you for them. And help each and every one of us to keep on keeping on in Jesus' name. We love you, Lord. Thank you again for all that you are to us. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you, Lord, that we were born, to, that we can serve you as you will in our lives. So help us to hold on. Let you lead us, let you guide us, direct us, and help us to be what you would have us to be. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. If you're familiar with the salvation, oh, got your attention. If you're familiar with the Salvation Army, you know that we have doctrines, and many churches have doctrines. Uh, and those doctrines are basically our beliefs. It's the core of what we believe. It's who we are. Uh, and they're all scripture-based. Uh, so there's nothing, nothing crazy in here. They're all scripture-based. And I want to read to you doctrine number seven and break down just a little bit for us to uh, to fully understand we believe so we the Salvation Army our soldiers our members those that call the Salvation Army home okay we believe the repentance towards God faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and regeneration by the Holy Spirit are necessary to salvation see this is a package okay um, and it, what is really interesting is if you look it's in logical order Repentance towards God, okay? Uh, in order for us to restore a relationship, in order for us to do that, repentance is the first part. I don't know if you, um, you know, remember when you were a little kid, I remember that my mom used to tell me that I only said sorry to my brother if my brother said sorry to me first. Have you ever done that? It's like, you need to go and apologize. No, they need to come and tell me first. That they, you know, and... And, and if, if we don't do that, obviously, you know, it's me and my brother. Eventually, we, we got along and we just, you know, we didn't, nothing, nothing really uh, happened that was like an absurd. Eventually, we were playing again, again together and we were fine. But think about it. Sometimes we do that with the Lord too. Or sometimes we do that with our relationship and visiting a church. I don't know how many times people say, like, oh, Captain, yeah, I would love to go visit your church. But first, I need to fix some things in my life. Then I'll go there. And that's, that's not the right way. You know, we come to the Lord. We come to the fellowship of believers the way that we are. And then with God's help, He's going to work on those areas that needs to be fixed, that needs to be renewed, that sometimes needs to be breaking and then molded again the way that He wants. So the first, thought, the first step is um, we need to ask for repentance towards God, okay, for our sins, for and, and and I'm not gonna go you know in specifics, but I would say very quickly. I think we, when we examine our own lives, we kind of know our sins. We know what we're struggling. Um, and then you see in faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. That's not a big one too, because we live in a society here in the Western world that sometimes we put faith towards many other things but God. We put faith in our work. We put faith in our degrees. We put faith on our money. We put faith in, in our jobs. And then we end up forgetting that those things will come. Those things will go. But faith towards God remains. And regeneration by the Holy Spirit. To regenerate is to get rid of the old and make it anew. If you, uh, if you are in church for a long time, if you consider yourself to be a Christian for a long, long time, you should have a story of regeneration. 
you could probably look back and say that's who I was this is how the Holy Spirit is making to be a new person regeneration by the Holy Spirit and all those things are necessary to salvation so see not just one because it's it is a continuum. you know it's an order you ask for forgiveness and then you start believing on him and believing in the power of his Holy Spirit then you start being shaped and molded by the Holy Spirit in order for us to obtain holiness salvation and that's really what we believe in Doctrine 7 that all those things comes together and it's a beautiful thing and I would say that many of us we are on this journey already and we praise God for that amen and that's doctrine number seven that we believe the repentance towards God faith in our Lord Jesus Christ and regeneration by the Holy Spirit are necessary to salvation When the best of me is barely breathing When I'm not somebody I believe in Hold on to me When I miss the light, the night is stolen When I'm slamming all the doors you've opened Hold on to me Hold on to me Hold on to me when it's too dark to see you When I am sure Let go, hold me again 
think I should I think I should have had my husband come and do the tribute to mothers <laughs> as I um uh, I love that presentation. <laughs> Um, but we, we thank the Lord for mothers today. If you saw in your program, um, there's, a, um, there's a little blip about mothers um, and the experience that we go through. It's not always roses, but it is God-ordained, and we go to God in motherhood as well. Um, but we would like to tribute the mothers that are here at the church. If you have come to church this week already, you've probably received a Mother's Day gift already. Um, but for those that are here today and celebrating with us today, we have another Mother's Day gift for you. I'm going to ask the, the kids to come forward. Uh, June, is Juliana, if you can come forward and help me pass these gifts out. All the moms that have, that have um, not received a gift, um, or all the moms just stand up today and we have a little gift for you. Let them know if you already received it, though. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you um, for all the mothers that we have here in this room. For those that are maybe watching us at home are not able to be here. For those that are also no longer with us. Father, as was said in the beginning of the service, we thank you for all the mothers, even though those that are maybe separated from us physically. But Father, we thank you because their kindness so needed in our world today their sensitivity their fine tuning and we thank you Father because we couldn't be here without them it is a gift to bear a child and Father as we celebrate publicly today but Mother's Day there are days every day Father we thank you for their lives we thank you Father for each one of our own mothers thank you for my mother that's in Brazil uh, Father, be with her as well. But Father, as we continue to look into to you, your word today and to find the ways to grow towards a deeper relationship with you, Father, we ask you for a special blessing for all the mothers here in Port Charlotte. We love you, Father. We thank you for their lives. And we pray all this in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. And God's people say, Amen. Happy Mother's Day again. Good morning. In case you all don't realize, we've been in the book of Acts and talking about how God didn't just choose one type of person. He chose us all, created us all, and chose us all. So today I'm going to read to you um, from Acts 15, chapter 5 through 19. But some of the sect of the Pharisees who believed rose up saying, 
it is necessary to circumcise them, to command them to keep the law of Moses. Now the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. And when there had been much dispute, Peter rose up and said to them, Men and brethren, you know that a good while ago God chose among us that by my mouth the Gentiles should hear the word of the gospel and believe. So God, who knows the heart, acknowledged them by giving them the Holy Spirit, just as he did to us, and made no distinction between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Now therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of the disciples, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Then all the multitude kept silent and listened to Barnabas and Paul, declaring how many miracles and wonders God had worked through them among the Gentiles. And after they had become silent, James answered, saying, Men and brethren, listen to me. Simon has declared how God at the first visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people for his name. And with this, the words of the prophets agree, just as it is written. After this, I will return and will rebuild the tabernacle of David, which has fallen down. I will rebuild its ruins and I will set it up so that the rest of mankind may seek the Lord, even all the Gentiles who are called by my name, says the Lord, who does all these things. Known to God from eternity are all his works. Therefore, judge not that we should not trouble those from among the Gentiles who are turning to God. So be it. Reading of the word. Well, we, we, we are together again doing our Proclaim series, um, and today we get to talk about grace and the grace of the Lord, and what a special thing to talk about grace on Mother's Day. Isn't that quite special? Um, I know many women in my life um, who are examples of God's graciousness, um, who are examples of God's forgiveness, who are examples of God's love. And so what a, what a wonderful thing to celebrate uh, Mother's Day on the day that we talk about grace. Um, well, we, as I, there is this book, and I had it for us today, but in the rush of the morning, it was left on our kitchen table. Um, so I apologize that I don't have that with me today. But there was this book that um, is a children's book, and it was, it's called Eric Says He's Sorry. Eric Says He's Sorry. And it's this little book. And I, just imagine what this story is like. Um, Eric has broken his neighbor's flower pot. And he sends and, and and when he breaks it, his sister pops into the gate and sees the broken flower pot. And he wonders, um, and he she wonders what happened. Then all of a sudden, when he when she asks what happened, the mom and dad pop through the gate and also see the broken flower pot. All of a sudden, Eric says, It wasn't me, it was her, right? Blaming his sister. Well, after his sister gets in trouble with mom and dad, guess who feels really bad and shares the truth? Eric. He shares the truth and confesses to his dad all that he had done about the flower pot and blaming his sister. Well, when he, his dad very forgivingly says, um, well, you don't have to glue it back together and glue the flower together. We'll go to the store and buy a new one. So the dad and Eric go to buy a new one. And when it's time to pay, Eric takes out his money. 
all that he has to pay for the flower pot and the new flower for his neighbor. But then he looks and see it's not enough. What he has is not enough to buy the beautiful new flowers that, uh, to replace the ones he, he broke. His dad tells him, don't worry, don't worry, that he will pay for it all. Thanks, said Eric, but I don't deserve it. You're right, says his dad, but no one is perfect. And in this book, the lesson that's learned is that, um, that we don't forget is that grace. Grace is that forgiveness and that um, good, unmerited favor and goodness that God gives to each one of us. So that would have been the story we share with you with all the illustrations of the bro broken flower pot and Eric's mishaps in the series of how he um, confessed and gained his dad's forgiveness and then the grace that his dad gave to him. You know, grace is a very complicated word. Um, it's a challenging word for us to understand, and it's a challenging biblical concept because it's more than just doing good thing for someone else. It's more than just brushing aside what happened. Okay, it's more than just stuffing down the bad things that we've done or that have been done to us. Yet it's also essential in our relationship to Christ. We sing it, right? We sing it and we sang it today. It's in so many Christian songs or phrases and within the Christian church. But it's e even in the early church, they asked, well, how is grace important to salvation? How is grace important to who we believe that God is? What we can gather from Paul's writings, for example, in Galatians 2.14, and especially in what we have today, keep your finger there in the Bible if you have it with you or on your phone, Acts 15. What we can gather in Acts 15 is that there were certain Jewish believers, um, uh, believers in Jesus, that followed Paul and Barnabas. So Paul and Barnabas would preach in certain places, and then these Jewish believers would come after they left and start telling the Gentile converts, those people that were not Jewish, that came to believe in God, they would tell them that they were not fully saved, that they did not have full salvation unless they were circumcised and started to follow the law of Moses. The traditions, the ceremonies, the rituals of the Jewish faith. Paul and Barnabas, remember we talked about Paul, he was saved dramatically by God, even though he persecuted believers, he became a follower of the way, and many of our books in the New Testament were letters and um, were written by him. Well, Paul and Barnabas disagreed with this. So they took their argument to the leaders of the church in Jerusalem. And this is um, the, the, the council in Jerusalem, the Jerusalem council that is often talked about in um, church history. The leaders gathered. They listened to all the debates at length, hearing Paul, hearing the other Jewish leaders, until finally Peter, remember Peter, the, the disciple, the foundation of the church that Jesus called, and, and he stood and he proclaims, just like our series title, this following speech. Acts 15, 6, 3, 6 through 11. The apostles and elders met to consider the question. After much discussion, Peter got up and addressed, Brothers, you know that some time ago, God made a choice among you that the Gentiles might hear from my lips the message and of the gospel and believe. God who knows the heart showed that he accepted them by giving the Holy Spirit to them, just as he did to us. He made no distinction betw between us and them, for he purified their hearts by faith. And now, why do you try to test God by putting on the necks of the disciples a yoke that neither we nor our fathers have been able to bear? No, we believe it is through grace of our Lord Jesus 
that we are saved just as they are. After those words at this council of Jerusalem, there still wasn't complete uniformity on thought on all the matters in the early church, but the church was very unified in this message that the, that the crucifixion the rex and the resurrection of Jesus and what that meant for believers. Peter stands and begins to speak to all those assembled. He first makes a point that he had made in Acts 10, that when he was confronted with a believer, Cornelius, that God does not make distinction between a Jew or a Gentile. Right? Now consider this. Think about groups of people that sometimes Christians don't want to get together with. Think about groups of people that maybe you don't want to get together with. Maybe think about those people that have done so many injustices that you believe they don't deserve the salvation of Christ. Or maybe you wouldn't want to be at a table with them as well. Well, Paul, Peter makes it clear here, Peter makes it clear that this is for the salvation is for all of those people, all people, right? All people, whether we believe they deserve it or not. Whether we believe that, well, you know, that's good for them, but let me stay here. Whether we want a relationship with them or not, God still says there's no distinction. His salvation is for all. Well, in that, um, indeed, why, Peter asked, why are we requiring them to do something we ourselves, is, we ourselves recognize is impossible? For we know that we are saved by the grace of God. You know, we talked a little bit last week about the covenant of, of God. How the Jews had to present themselves with an offering before the Lord because um, to, to, um, to save them from their sins, to put their sins on that offering, and then have their sins um, uh, cleaned with that shedding of the blood. And, you know, why did they have to do that? Because they sinned and sinned and sinned right and they kept sinning and so this law that peter's saying why are we requiring them to do something that we are ourselves recognize impossible tells that those laws of moses have changed we have we jesus was that lamb that was sacrificed for you and me making grace possible for each one of us we see something very important here Though there might not be official unity in every single thing of the early church, the message of Peter is in line with what Paul was preaching in the, in the synagogue. That's, you all remember last week's sermon? That Paul preached that salvation was for all. Salvation was for all. Um, and the freedom that salvation brings is for all. Now remember last week, when we say those things and we believe those things, we respond with... Amen. Or we respond with hallelujah. So I'm going to say that again. So last week we learned that salvation is for all. Amen. That freedom is for all. Right? And we add to the goodness of what God gives to us, of the grace that God gives to each one of us. Uh, again, you know, um, in the book, in the, in the story, in the beginning story I told you, Eric says, sorry. You know, that, that little story was a message of forgiveness and grace, especially when we sin. His pardon that we received when we've sinned, that gives us a new life and a new relationship with the Lord. I continue to ask, what is this grace? What is this grace? Um, uh, sometimes we even have the phrase, oh, they were so gracious, right? We want to be gracious people. Well, continuing to find out what this grace means, especially our man definition of grace, not man, woman, but just humans, our human definition of grace, this is what I have found. So grace is a simple elegance or refinement of movement, kind of like what we saw today, the a, 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 a beautiful movement or the state or experience of finding something funny oh they were so gracious saying that they were funny courteous goodwill 
saying something like, at least he has the grace to admit his debt to her. So courteous goodwill. An attractive, polite manner of behaving. The next, oh, like social graces. The next one, a period officially allowed for payment bill of a sum due or compliance with after the deadline. Okay, an extended period of grace as a special favor. We know this one, a short prayer of thanks before or after a meal, right? Say grace before your meal. And then also prayer of thanks, thanksgiving, a blessing, a benediction. If you are in a royal family, this would be used as a form of description of address. Your graciousness, your grace, people might say if you're watching um, shows about royalty. And then finally, what we believe in Christian faith, the free and unmerited favor of God as, manis as manifested in salvation of sinners and the bestowal of blessings. You know, as I read those definitions, and as you were listening to them, the first eight seemed to be man's grace, but what we perceive to be grace. And it's kind of like, I like that. Something about that seemed beautiful, right? Taking a liking to someone's work, or taking a liking for someone's goodness, or being good to somebody else because you like them or liked what they just did. But Peter talks about that last definition that we heard. God's grace is unmerited favor, unmerited goodness. You know, Eric says, Eric, Eric says, sorry, focused on that incredible grace, the goodness given to us when we've done wrong. But do you know what? And it's not just a temporary condition, right? This grace is not just one time or just one event. God's grace is constant. It continues throughout your whole life. God, we had God's grace before we even came to God, right? We had God's favor before we came to God, yet we go to him with, forget, with asking for pardon, asking for forgiveness, and receiving that full salvation of the Lord. In the same before the foundation, it was the same before the foundation of the world. And it will be the same throughout eternity. Let's take a step further. The, what, that, whatever that may be, okay, however guilt we feel when we've sinned or we've pardoned, okay, even bitterness that we received, God can change that through his salvation, through his pardon, through his redemption, through his grace. God's grace can heal all of our broken hearts, okay? You know, when um, you have a skinned, skinned elbow or a skinned knee, and you put some balm on it to make it clean and make it feel better, right? That's the, God, the goodness of God's grace. That's not just a feeling, but a goodness that's changing us and healing us. God's grace gives us peace in the middle of the night when we can't sleep because we've thought about all our mistakes and the things wrong in our life. In the story we read, it allows Eric to keep a joyful relationship with his father. Not just carrying the things and the wrong things that he did and blaming his sister, carrying that guilt and that shame and that pain, but grace allows him to enjoy all the moments with his father, not having to carry those things, not having to hide those things, not having to keep up with what did he say about his sister. Grace allows us to have a relationship with our father. You know, individually, as a church, as a community, as a world, we need the peace and graciousness of God. He designed a plan of perfect salvation for us. Ephesians 1, 7 through 10 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance to the riches of God's grace. We hear that in accordance to the riches of of God's grace that he lavished on us with all the wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure. 
and which he purposed in Christ to be put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth under one head, even Christ. Grace is free, an unmerited gift of God that the Father has given us through his Son, Jesus Christ, and it enables salva salvation and spiritual healing for all who believe. You know, every day, I believe we have a choice to make. We are faced to make a choice. To try to earn God's favor and approval as being as good as we can. That means we work and work and work to have God be happy with us. Or... We respond knowing that God loves us and he has grace on us and knowing that if we fail, he still loves us, he still carries us, and he helps us, okay? And we, we have the choice of working it out all on our own or just being in a relationship with God and loving him and trusting him that things will be Okay, we are saved by grace alone. And that's why Peter proclaimed that day. It's, and its proclamation has reverberated throughout history. Not only can we receive the grace of God into our own lives, but guess what? We can receive God's grace, and then we can pass this graciousness to others. It's not the same as God's grace. But it's still the goodness that God gives to others. You know, I think there's a little Eric inside all of us, right? That we're trying to do something good. We get caught. We might blame it on somebody else. You know, we were raised this way. Our parents thought this. Oh, it's because my life has been this way. And that's why we sin, right? But we carry that burden just as Eric did. We carry that hurt just as little Eric did. We try to hide the sin and fix it all on our own. And then we hurt others along the way. But through this forgiveness of God, through this salvation of God, God's grace can restore all of that. We don't have to carry that pain anymore. They need, we all need, they need to experience that grace of God and it could be through you. Remember last week we preached our responsibility in preaching about salvation to all? Well, you know, part of our responsibility is to show grace to all as well. We receive that grace for all, and we give that grace to all as well. You know, think about it. If you worry about your mistakes, others worry about their mistakes, and they need that salvation and unmerited favor from God. I'm going to share with you, and it's also in that pink um, per coral, I guess, Coral little um, insert that you received in your bulletin. Um, I wanted to share with you these ways that we can show grace. You know, if we read this on this Mother's Day, we know that today brings a lot of emotions for many women around the world, right? For many people, for many children, for many men around the world, um, of what, ex of, of what um, this day can bring for them. And it's a day to show grace. To show grace, that happy picture image of a mom that's um, calm and quiet and wonderful with her children and have the excellent relationship, that doesn't happen to everyone. Not everyone is gifted with that. So today is a great, it's a day of to give others grace, and these are some ways. First thing with our words. Be kind and gentle and what you say and how to say it. Now, maybe in your mind, you might want to raise your hand. You don't have to do it physically, but you might want to raise your hand that you need to work on this. We can work on this, right? Be kind and gentle in what you say and how you say it. Look for needs and opportunities. Simple everyday kindness and actions that often help in great ways. Let it go. Respond to others with grace. 
Sometimes people are going to be rude. We know that, right? So instead of responding harshly, keep a calm spirit. Then be there. Sometimes your presence is all that's needed to show someone they're loved. Be happy with a person who's happy. Be sad in the person who's sad. Even in today's age when we can't really be with a lot of people, you know, there's social media, there's a phone call, there's letters, that still connection to be present with someone else. Forgive. When someone asks you to forgive, do so graciously and without correction, without, okay, but, okay, I'll accept your forgiveness, but, you know, all of, all of that. Learn to ask for forgiveness. That can be hard as well. Be quick to apologize when you make a mistake or have wronged someone else. And it's not the, I'm so sorry, but you really, and then the rest of the, the, the excuse. That's not an apology, right? That's not asking for forgiveness. So be quick to apologize when you make a mistake or have wronged someone else. Then watch the way you speak. Be careful how you express yourselves. You know, as, I, as I'm getting older, I realize that um, the words in my mind, when I say them, and the look on my face and the tone might not be what the words in my, might not match the words that I'm saying. So even, I'll tell you something that I do, sometimes I might say words in front of a mirror. Practice what I say in front of a mirror because I need to know what I look like when I say things, you know, because sometimes well, the words that I say are not matching the expression that I make. So watch the way you speak. Be careful with how you express yourselves. Gratitude. Say thank you often and let people know how much you appreciate them. And the last one, take an interest in others. Learn about other people. Ask them questions. Listen and care. As I mentioned before, Mother's Day brings lots of emotions for many people. Some can't wait to celebrate, and some can't wait for the day to be over. There are mild reasons for both of those reactions. And as followers of Christ who believe in freedom, who believe in a new day, salvation, grace, and holy living, we can help. We can help with that. Whether our friends anticipate or agonize the day, you know, these things are how we can help others, especially on this day. You know, um, mothers and children, we need the grace of God. And let me tell you, everyone in this room my, is a child of a mother, is a child of, a, of God. The grace of God can enter our lives, not just when we sin, but his goodness can enter our life at any moment. Today, I want you to think whether you carry a rocky relationship with your children, whether you carry a rocky relationship with your mom, and I know that in our families, we have extended families, so mom, grandma, aunt, stepmom, all those parts of a family, you know, we can carry those to Jesus today. Whether our expectations were unrealized as a mom or our idea of what a mom should be and a happy family it should be is not present in your life or whether you're mourning a mom who has passed away, allow God's grace to come in. Allow God's unmerited, unlimited goodness to come in. Allow his favor to come in, right? Let's spend some time, if we can, um, Roger, if you can come to play some music for us today. Let's spend some time today in the altar, asking for God's grace, asking for forgiveness. Or maybe there's a relationship in your life that you need to bring to the Lord, Maybe that mother figure that you want to be or that mother that you have isn't what you would like for them to be. Come to, come to God. He knows. He can carry you. He can help you. He can start that goodness and unmerited favor. He can pour 
that over you. And I pray and I ask you to pray for others, for others who are carrying heavy loads today. They're carrying very heavy loads today. This this past year, just within this church, just within our home league, we have had several women pass away, several mothers pass away. It's, it's it carries a deep pain. So imagine what our world is going through on a day like today. Pray for God's grace. Pray for God's goodness and open your arms and receive it. Receive that goodness that God wants to give you. So as we have a moment of prayer, you know, if you want to come and pray at the altar, that's fine. We wipe it down every Sunday. If you want to come pray, if you want to stay at your, at your seat, pray. And I was, as I was preparing this, I thought, if you want to pray, if your heart brings you another lady that's in this room, go and pray with them too. Yes, keep distance. Be comfortable with how you are. But if there's another lady in this room that you want to pray for, pray for them too. Pray for them too. We all need encouragement. And we can extend that grace, God's grace, to all. Let's spend some time in prayer, thanking Lord and also praying for God's grace. As we are entering this time of prayer, I'm gonna act, I'm gonna open up our prayer time. Would anyone here like to stand and give a word, give a prayer for us this afternoon? Would anyone like to say a short prayer for us this afternoon? And after and after several people pray, I'll close us off together.
great too, mother and father. And birthdays are another day. And on my birthday, I think of my mother. What, and what you go through to give birth to someone mm -hmm. is unparalleled, as you know. And so on my birthday, I think of my mother. And we have Mother's Day and we have Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's pray. Let's pray again. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for this time of prayer. Thank you that we can be honest with you and that we know not all days and not all celebrations um, are just a, a feeling of, um, su of sunshine and of smiles. We know that um, even Mary, Jesus' mother, had hardships as a mom. Lord, so we know that there are hardships that we go through. Lord, I pray for our children. I pray for our children that have um, others taking care of them besides their mothers, Lord. Thank you for raising others to guide our children when our mothers can't be there, can't be there to raise them. Thank you, God, for them. Thank you for, give them energy. Give those caretakers who have to be a mom. Lord, thank you for those that are in our congregation and the difference that they make in their grandchildren's lives and their um, nieces and nephews' lives, God. Thank you for those. Thank you for those that, um, thank you for those that are not mothers, but yet they bring other kids together and they, and they are that mother figure towards them. Lord, I pray for our kids that have rocky relationships for, with their parents and with their moms especially. Lord, bring healing there. Let us hope, bring hope to those situations as well. Thank you, Lord, for saving us and redeeming us. And it is not just our, um, our eternal life that we, we think about. It's our life here as well. Thank you for redeeming us while we can live on this earth. God, I pray for your grace in all those parts of our relationships. Lord, I, th I pray for your grace on each one of us as we are a family of God and we carry each other. Let us show others the grace that you have given to us. Let us remember that, Lord. And we think about first on Mother's Day, we think about our own family and our own mothers, but help us also to raise our eyes to a bigger family in front of us to other mothers in this world, to other children in this world, to others that need your grace and your um, unmerited favor. Lord, help us be the bringers of those hope that's just you. Let us, be, let us, do, let us do that in all the situations that we have. And even if we did not have the best relationship with our mother, God, we have you. And help us to talk about that hope that we have in you to others. Lord, also I pray for you to heal those rocky relationships. Lord, I pray for our youth. I pray for our kids. That they could be strong in you. God, provide for their present and provide for their future. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this unmerited goodness. Nothing that we did, all that you did. God, we raise your hands and we say we love you and we thank you, God, today. Thank you for all of your goodness. Thank you that we can celebrate you. In your name we pray, amen. 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 Captain Claudia requests us to uh, close this time with the song uh, Happy in the Lord. And it's a song that we presented to the church a few weeks ago. And the lyrics of that song invites us to think about all the things that we get to celebrate, all the things that we can bring to the Lord 
uh, even in difficult times. Uh, we understand that sometimes uh, it's difficult to be happy in the Lord. However, when we look of all the God's goodness and grace and forgiveness, uh, this song invites us to look deeper in order to find that joy. So if you can, please stand. Uh, we'll sing Happy in the Lord, and then after that, we'll have our benediction. joy to our soul. Amen. Uh, 
Our youth pastor, BFI Sydney, will come and pronounce our benediction and go on the strength, go in the joy of the Lord. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all. And I come here, uh, this is a special day. Well, uh, even though I'm far away from my mom, I, w I had the opportunity this morning to to say Happy Mother's Day to her. And I know she's feeling sad because she's away from, from me and I'm away from her. But even though I know uh, the Lord is with us and he's comforting, comforting us, and and we can feel each other's presence in spirit even though with the distance and i come here today as a son and i always remind myself of the bl blessing that we have in exodus 20 12 that says honor your father and your mother that your days may be long in the land that the lord your god is giving you and we have a blessing as son and daughters uh to honor our parents and that's the special blessing that I, I would like to share with all of you. Uh, but for all of us here, and especially for our mothers uh, everywhere, our blessing will come from Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, that says, And the peace of God, which transcends all understand, understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind, minds in Christ Jesus. May we go in peace and with that in our minds, uh, honoring our mothers and uh, not only this day, <laughs> like Captain said, not only this day, but every day honoring our mothers. May God bless you all. Happy Mother's Day. Amen.